Thus far, we've talked about how to recognise trading opportunities in a market, whether it be the beginning of a trend, the end of a trend, or the completion of a pattern. But discovering an opportunity and exploiting it is only one half of a good trader. The other half is to control risk. It's often said that there are no great traders, there are only great risk controllers. How do we control risk in terms of trend and pattern? It is worth making a comparison uh, between how we trade trends. We can trade both the beginning of a trend and the end of a trend. Um, we can trade the breakdown of a trend and we can trade the successful beginning of a trend. We don't trade the failure of patterns. We only trade the successful completion of a pattern. We don't trade uh, the moment of pattern breakdown. But let's then start with the pattern. It's perhaps the simpler of the two. When a pattern completes, we enter the trade, subject to all those uncertainties of whether we require a close, a simple trade beneath the neckline, or two closes. And then we make that decision by reference to other influences and other pieces of evidence, volume, open interest, and so on and so forth. When we enter the trade, uh, the logical risk control is to cut the trade if the completion of the pattern is negated by a move up and to take profit when the target is reached down here. Cut the position, take profit. It should be that simple, but we know of course that the world of charting is a question of probabilities, not certainties. So even though everything is correct and that the pattern is completed and we enter our trade here, it's not certain to get there. On balance, it will. So the prudent trader will find when he's got a bit of a profit on, he might reduce his stop to follow the trade down and lock in profit on any rally back. That's very simple. It's also worth bearing in mind that that's looking at, we never look at one pattern in isolation, but it's also part of a, of a wider scenario. For example, the, um, this reversal might be a reversal that actually breaks a trend line to give it added vigor, in which case this, this uh, profit-taking level, might, you might want to follow the thing and not take profit here, but just have a um, cut your loss, um, have a a, a uh, moving stop in case we develop a new bear trend. Turning to trends, the obvious point of when you're entering a trend and getting in early, uh, whether it be buying here or buying on a confirmation of the support from the prior high, trends don't have a minimum move. They are indefinite in length. All the more reason then to have a trending um, a, a dynamic profit, uh, um, take profit uh, level so that you follow the trend up and these might be the, the, these might be the dynamic levels, profit taking levels so that when it breaks back through the horizontal you take profit and get out. The critical point is that in both trends and patterns we lock in profit, we guard our profit by dynamic profit-taking levels, and we don't look at them in isolation, but bear in mind the wider context. So that uh, a pattern might be part of a, a bigger trend, in which case you'd want to follow the trend. It's a dynamic situation in terms of where, what is taking control of the market. It may be that this breaks down, it may be it forms a head and shoulders top, and we start selling here. When we get involved in a trend here, there is no limit to the trend, even though there might be head and shoulders reversals causing it, as there is indeed there. That suggests a trade down to there. But once a, trend's, a new trend is set in place, there's no limit to it. Therefore, your fixed idea... Const so what I'm talking about is a constant re-evaluation of the market to establish the correct position of your dynamic stop-loss. Risk-reward ratios are talked about. The risk-reward ratio is set by the chart, not by the trader. What the trader does 
is knows how much he wants to commit at any one level, given his, his cutout point. If you know where you're going to close a trade as soon as you put it on, you know what you're prepared to risk in terms of, and the size of the trade is what you vary uh, accordingly. So, for example, um, typically, one approach to this would be to risk the same proportion of your trading capital on any one trade. Therefore, you change the amount you're willing to risk at any one thing, knowing the cost of failure. So, my approach is, when you put in a position, you should automatically know when you're going to cut out of it. Then you can work out the cost of failure and adjust the position size accordingly.